Hi, it's uh, Chris Thompson from Investor Intel, and I'm here with Dan Blundell from the founder and CEO of Nano One. Hi, Dan. Hey, Chris. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for taking some time today. Maybe you can give uh, our viewers a quick overview of Nano One. Yeah, look, Nano One is a uh, it's a technology company focused on process technology for making cathode materials that go into lithium ion batteries. And the we have a our technology improves the the, the cost structure of making the materials, improves the uh, supply chain uh, and the and the carbon and environmental footprint, and we're also focused on improving the performance of the materials and the uh, and ultimately the durability and the the long lasting component of the, of the lithium ion battery. And and where is Nano One focusing their their technology? Well, we uh, we concentrate on on three critical uh, groups of materials: um, uh, the olivines, which is lithium iron phosphate; the uh, ternary or layered materials, which is nickel, manganese, and cobalt based materials; and then the spinels, which don't have any cobalt in them at all, and uh, and they're kind of more sort of fast charging applications that might be suitable for solid state batteries. And so, are you are you addressing both the regular and the solid state batteries? Yeah. Yeah, essentially, um, they're all lithium ion batteries, and they all need cathode materials. Uh, we uh, we um, build sort of coatings on these materials to make them interface better with uh, within those batteries. But uh, essentially, we're battery agnostic in that sense, and, and relatively chemistry agnostic. So we have a process for making cathode materials, and we can make uh, we can make basically all of the different uh, types of chemistries, and they're applicable to virtually any kind of lithium ion battery you can think of. And how does your process uh, better than other processes in the in the field right now? So uh, um, uh, if we look kind of upstream, uh, we have uh, the, because of the raw material inputs we're using, we're using alternative sources of lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. We can actually use we can go directly from metal to cathode powder, avoiding the need to convert it to a sulfate. And the same with lithium, we can avoid the need to convert lithium to a hydroxide. And that eliminates a whole bunch of the uh, the cost, uh, the energy input, and the shipping of sulfates around the world, and and, and the all the water that's attached to it, and uh, and also the carbon footprint that's associated with that. So really, it, it it can transform the supply chain, make it much cleaner and greener, and 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 quite a bit cheaper because we eliminate uh, the steps in between. And is this your your process that you had a recent news release on called the M two Cam process? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So M two Cam is is uh, is an adaption of our uh, one pot process. So our one pot process, the concept really is that we're doing the we're assembling the nickel, manganese, and the cobalt at the same time that we're we're assembling the lithium and the coating material. So everything kind of goes into one reaction. M two Cam, a lot. We've taken it one step further. Now we take this conversion step. Of the of the let's say the lithium to the hydroxide and the metals to the sulfate and we do all of that in in our reaction so we have this all the materials go in one place we form this composite material powder that comes out and it fires readily in a furnace to red to to make our 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 single crystal cathode materials uh, everything kind of bakes into one material so we avoid a whole bunch of coating steps, a whole bunch of um, intermediate steps, and the conversion step up front that happens between the miner and the cathode uh, cathode guy. So that, uh, that obviously there's a whole bunch of efficiencies there. It, imp it drastically improves the carbon footprint and and leads to uh, savings probably in them measured in the many thousands of dollars a ton uh, in, in terms of the cathode material. And does the single crystal process have any other advantages? Well, sing so the idea of the single crystal um, uh, concept is that cathode materials tend to tend to break up uh, first of all as you calendar the own the foil before they actually get in into the cell itself and then even within the battery once it's all sealed and the battery's cycling you're charging and discharging it everything's kind of contracting and shrinking and uh, uh, sort of contracting and expanding and it tends to break apart and and when it breaks apart the coatings on the outside of these large clusters break apart and you get you're exposed to side reactions that that uh, start to degrade the battery. So we coat the individual crystals within these clusters, and that enables us to get away, uh, basically as the clusters kind of break apart, as things as things kind of move and shift inside the battery, um, we are still remain, we still remain protected from the side reactions because we are coating the smallest element within the cathode powder itself. 
So you have sort of a, a more friendly environmental process and, and it seems to be a, a you know, the single cr crystal uh, solution. So how do you work with players in the space, like say a QuantumScape or, you know, a battery manufacturer, a car manufacturer like a Tesla? How would you work with them to get your technology uh, implemented in their processes? So, so we, we work up and down the supply chain. So we, we have relationships with the miners, um, partly because we, we make the, you know, we make uh, our process by getting rid of that, that conversion step to sulfate or hydroxide. It makes lithium carbonate um, have, give it more value and it makes the nickel powder have more value, for instance. And then um, in the in the midstream, we're working with chemical producers and cathode producers. And then, and then uh, as you said, the, the battery producers and the OEMs, the, the electric vehicle manufacturers, we're building strong relationships there. They, uh, you know, the quantum scapes of the world still need cathode material. So um, they have, I and mean, we work with a number of different solid state battery companies, um, evaluating and testing our material, finding ways to integrate it and make it work better with their, with their the design of their battery. And then uh, we're doing the same thing with the auto manufacturers as well. And the idea is that, is that really the, it's the, it's the miners and the automakers who really want to clean up that supply chain and make it more efficient and make it more carbon, uh, uh, carbon neutral, carbon friendly. And, uh, but they're not going to be the, at the end of the day, they're not going to be the chemical producers. It's going to be the guys in the midstream. So we're also working there to build relationships and because that's where the fulfillment is going to have to happen. The demand happens from the other, from either end of the sort of supply chain, but really fulfilling on that demand happens with the relationships we're, we're doing on the, on the chemistry side. And, and when do you think you'll see some commercial uh, results from this uh, process? Look, there's a, there's always lots of work and validation to happen, yeah. and uh, and and we validate internally, and then we validate with our partners, and then we validate with our partners' customers, and uh, we a bunch of our uh, uh, the the partnerships we have in place uh, are, are at various stages. But I would say the ones that are furthest along. Uh, we're at a stage right now where we're validating materials with automotive manufacturers who at the end of the day are the last call. Basically, they say, we want this material or we don't, right? And that uh, that's where we're trying to create that demand. We think we'll see that uh, some of that demand and some of those validations coming to fruition this year. And that okay. will lead to piloting of our technology in various jurisdictions around the world. Well, excellent. Well, I look forward to following your progress and uh, thank you for your time today. Yeah, great, Chris. Uh, thanks very much for yours as well, and nice to uh, nice to be on on uh, on video here with you.